Magandang magandang araw sa inyong lahat and welcome to our first pre-recorded lecture for the subject Nursing Care of the High-Risk Newborn to Maturity. And for this meeting, we will be talking about ventilation maintenance, establishing extra uterine circulation, maintaining fluids and electrolytes in the high-risk newborn, and regulating temperature. So these are the topics to be covered in this video lecture. Now you always have to remember that for healthy newborns, they are able to accomplish ventilation maintenance on their own. Ibig sabihin, kahit wala pong assistance ng mga healthcare providers or nurses na kagaya natin, these newborns are able to maintain the aeration of their lungs, even without suctioning, even without the help of uh, oxygen, kaya nilang ventilate yung kanilang mga lung fields. That's for healthy newborns. However, uh, not all newborns that we will handle in our career are healthy. There will be times when we will be faced with newborns who are also high risk, especially those who had difficulty initiating first breath. Yung mga, pag yung may mga patients tayo who had difficulty initiating the first breath or the initial breath, or yung mga nahirapang huminga on the first uh, few seconds of life, these newborns should be observed in the next few hours to make sure that their respiration is maintained. Anong ibig sabihin nito? Even if we were able to initiate breathing or kahit pa napaklear natin yung airway, we were able to assist the newborn to initiate or take the initial breath. Kung hindi naman niya ito na maintain, yung paghinga niya ay pumapangit pa rin, that may pose as a problem. So, always remember that if there was difficulty in initiating the first breath during the first few minutes of life, this newborn patient should always be observed to make sure that their respiration is maintained. Kasi nga po, kahit na na-initiate na natin siya, pwede pa rin po itong mag low or pumangit po yung kanyang respiration. So, you have to remember that. As healthcare providers, you should also know how to monitor the respiratory rate of your newborn so that you can maintain ventilation maintenance. You have to remember that the normal respiratory rate is 45 to 60 cycles per minute. And if there is tachypnea or increase in respiration, that is already a sign that there is an obstruction or respiratory compromise. Maaaring ito yung mga nagiging problema kaya po nagkakaroon ng tachypnea or nag increase yung respiratory rate ng isang high-risk newborn. So pag mataas po, more than 60 cycles per minute ang kanyang respiratory rate, you have to remember that there is a, a possible obstruction or there may be a possible respiratory compromise. So what do we do if we see a newborn has a tachypnea or the newborn has increasing respiratory rate, immediately you have to undress the baby's chest. Bakit natin tatanggalin yung kanyang mga damit na pang taas? Because we have to look for retractions or the inward sucking of the chest wall during respiration, specifically during inspiration or inhalation. So, ano bang ibig sabihin kasi ng uh, retractions? These retractions mean that there is already forceful inhalation na pati yung mga chest wall ng bata ay nasasak na din niya inward. Now, pag nakikita na po natin kasi yung retraction, this usually reflects dysnea or difficulty of breathing. So, pag nakakakita po tayo ng isang bata na mataas yung kanyang respiratory rate, remove the uh, clothing on the chest immediately to expose the chest and then you have to note for retractions kasi nga pag may retraction ibig sabihin forceful yung kanyang pag-inhale kasi nga nagkakaroon na siya ng oxygen hunger and that means that the patient has dyspnea pag meron siyang retraction so again pag meron tayong nakita na increased respiratory rate sa mga high risk newborns immediately remove the chest clothing and look for possible retractions Aside from that, you also have to consider those newborns who have difficulty maintaining respirations. So yung mga bata na nahihirapang i-maintain yung kanilang respiration or nagkakaroon ng fluctuation ng kanilang mga respiratory rate, you have to place them under infant warmer. Okay? Ilalagay natin sila sa mga infant warmer or sa mga floor lamps 
and we have to remove the chest clothing. Bakit po natin kailangan na ilagay sila sa mga thermoregulated environment like your infant warmer or your mga floor lamps? Because we want to keep the infant warm to prevent acidosis. Paano ulit yun nangyayari? You have to remember na pag yung bata ay nilalamig, mas nagkakaroon siya ng more energy expenditure. At para magkaroon siya ng energy, that infant or newborn will have to spend more oxygen to create heat or energy in the body. E alam natin na nahihirapan na nga siyang mag-establish at mag-maintain ng kanyang respiration. So what happens? Mas maraming oxygen ang nakukonsume ng isang bata na meron na nga siyang difficulty maintaining respiration. So we don't want that to happen. So what do we do? We place the child in a warm environment that is thermoregulated so that hindi siya magkaroon ng Acidosis. Another question is, why do we have to remove the chest clothing of the child? We have to remove the chest clothing of the child because we want to look for possible retractions. Kasi dun natin malalaman if the patient has dyspnea or difficulty of breathing. So again, you have to place the child in a thermoregulated environment para hindi siya magkaroon ng respiratory acidosis para konti lang yung kanyang oxygen expenditure and then Remove the chest clothing para po makita natin for any possible signs of retraction. Now, when you are placing the child in an infant warmer or you are placing the child in a thermoregulated bassinet, the best position is always semi-fowler's position or yung ulo niya ay naka 15 degrees angle like this. Okay? Now, why do we want to do this? Because we want the abdominal organs of the child to fall away from the diaphragm to add breathing space. Always remember, pag nakasupain po yung bata, there's a possibility na yung mga intestines niya or yung mga other abdominal organs niya may add pressure to the diaphragm. So meaning hindi makakapag-expand ng maigi si diaphragm pag nakasupain position lang po yung bata or flat on bed. But if we place the child on a semi-fowler's position, 15 degrees angle, the abdominal organs of the child will fall away from the diaphragm adding more breathing space. All right. So since na pag-usapan po natin kanina yung ating retractions, I will show you a picture of how retraction looks like. So ganito po ang itsura ng retraction. As you can see here, sa isang bata na normal naman yung kanyang respiration, as you can see there is no sucking in of the chest wall. But if you look closely on the first child on your left, nakikita nyo halos nakikita na yung mga uh, spaces in between the ribs of the child. That is what you call the intercostal retraction. Pag tinitignan nyo naman yung isang bata na katabi niya, yung kanyang abdomen ay halos nasasak in na niya din forward. That's what we call the abdominal retraction. Dahil sa sobrang force ng paghinga ng bata, nahihila niya yung kanyang intercostal spaces or yung kanyang uh, abdominal wall. So, yan yung tinatawag natin na retraction. Those are signs of dyspnea or difficulty of breathing because sobrang forceful ng paghinga ng bata na nahihila niya yung mga other structures that are surrounding the lungs. Okay? So, if you see retractions, either mapa uh, intercostal retraction man yan or abdominal retraction, you have to immediately report the case to the doctor. Now, what happens if the child is unable to maintain respiration? Diba na, na pag-usapan natin ganina that it is one of our responsibilities as nurses and healthcare providers to maintain the ventilation of the high-risk newborn. However, if we were a, unable to do that, ang mangyayari po is that the extrauterine circulation will also be affected. As I have discussed uh, previously on our previous meetings na yung respiration natin, it directly affects the circulation of the uh, blood in the newborn. Now, sabi dito, if respiratory function cannot be initiated or it cannot be maintained, this may lead to lack of cardiac function. So, ibig sabihin, pag hindi natin na-maintain yung respiration ng bata, mag fluctuate din yung kanyang heart rate until such time that the heart will also lose its functioning. Pwede pong magkaroon ng circulatory collapse yung bata if we are not able to maintain respiration. That's the reason why we have to remember to maintain respiration as much as possible because this is the reason why extracircular circulation will also fluctuate or uh, fail. 
Now, if the newborn has no audible heart rate or wala siyang cardiac rate na naririnig natin or if the cardiac rate is less than 80 beats per minute, what do we do? We have to give close chest massage or yung tinatawag natin na cardiac massage or your mga chest compression. That is what we need to do if we cannot hear any heart rate or if the heart rate is less than 80 beats per minute, we have to give closed chest massage. So how do we do that? We should hold the infant with two fingers supporting the back, okay? Or with your fingers supporting the back, you hold natin yung infant natin dito. Or if we can have, if we have a flat surface, we can place that uh, newborn there sa isang hard surface para po meron tayong place to leverage on or para po mayroon tayong place kung saan pwede nating gawin yung cardiac compression. Do not do cardiac compression on a soft bed kasi nga babaon lang po yung bata doon, hindi din po papasok yung pressure na nilalagay nyo on the chest. Again, it should be a hard, flat surface kung gagawin nyo po yung chest compression or your closed chest massage. Okay? So hold an infant with fingers supporting the back or place the child in a flat, hard surface. Next, you have to depress the sternum of the newborn with two fingers at yung depth niya dapat ay 1 to 2 centimeters lamang and the rate should be 100 times per minute. That is the way to properly do your closed chest massage. Aside from that, you can also intersperse your uh, closed chest massaging with lung ventilation. Okay? So, magbibigay ka ng one rescue breath and then five massages. So, yung lung ventilation mo dapat or your rescue breathing should only be given at 30 times per minute. Okay? And then it is also interspersed with the closed chest massaging na five rates or uh, five chest compressions in one blow. So, ibig sabihin nito, magbibigay tayo ng one blow or one lung ventilation and then five closed chest massage. Ganito po yung rate niya. So, blow, one, two, three, four, five. Blow, one, two, three, four, five. That's how you intersperse lung ventilation with your closed chest massaging. Right? So, yun po yung kanilang ratio dapat. Now, when you establish extra uterine circulation, you have to also continue to monitor the respiratory effort and cardiac activity by using the pulse oximeter and palpating the femoral pulses. Now, ano bang kasing ibig sabihin ng pulse oximeter? Yung pulse oximeter mo, it uh, measures your oxygen saturation, how well your blood is able to deliver oxygen to the peripheries in the body. Ito po yung mga kinakabit natin na monitor dito sa mga fingers. Ang tawag po natin doon ay pulse oximeter. The normal uh, oxygen saturation is 98% to 100% na oxygen saturation ng ating dugo. Lower than that is, uh, that means already that the circulation of the body is ineffective or ibig sabihin meron tayong kakulangan sa oxygen kasi nga pangit yung ating circulation. So that's the reason why we have to monitor the respiratory effort and the cardiac activity of the high-risk newborn for us to know if circulation, extracircular circulation is already established effectively by using pulse oximeter. Alright, if the heart sound, like I said, is less than 80 beats per minute after 30 seconds of cardiac compression and ventilation. Kunwari, nagbibigay ka na ng cardiac massaging, closed chest massage. And then after 30 seconds of doing that, you still got a, a heart rate of less than 80 beats per minute. What do you do? We already start giving epinephrine. Okay? So we give epinephrine because we want to improve cardiac contractility. Gusto nating pagandahin yung kanyang pagpitik ng puso. That's the time that we now give epinephrine because it is known to increase heart rate and it also improves cardiac contractility. So, paano natin binibigay yung epinephrine? It is sprayed on the endotracheal tube to stimulate cardiac functioning. So, that's how we place the um, 
epinephrine, it's on the endotracheal tube. Bakit siya merong endotracheal tube yung high-risk newborns? Because typically, when we do newborn resuscitation, we already place the child in endotracheal tube para po meron tayong lalagyan ng ambo bags. Okay? So, yun po. Doon natin isispray yung endotracheal tube as per doctor's order of epinephrine. Okay. If the newborn has difficulty initiating cardiac functioning, we have to transfer, consider transferring the child to the high-risk facility for more care and surveillance. So, if you already have given epinephrine, you have already done your uh, neonatal resuscitation and still the extrauterine circulation is not yet established and maintained, you have to consider na baka hindi po kaya ng facility natin and that we have to go and transfer the child to another facility for more care, care and management. Now, in doing neonatal resuscitation, you have to remember that it is always best if you have someone with you to help you with the procedure. So, ang nakikita nyo po dito ay yung two-man neonatal resuscitation. So, as you can see, someone is given the, giving the closed chest massage or the chest compression while the other one is giving the rescue breathing. So, makikita nyo that newborn is flat on bed Okay, nasa isang hard surface siya and the nurse holding the chest of the child has her fingers supporting the back of the baby para po meron tayong leverage para po hindi bumaon din yung uh, ating chest massage sa bed lang din. So parang as a form of support, nilagay niya yung kanyang fingers on the back of the newborn. So as you can see, she is using two fingers to perform the closed chest massage and then what the other nurse will do is she will give one rescue breathing and then magpa-pump siya ng 5 beats per minute. So one blow, 5 beats per minute. So that's how we do your two-man neonatal resuscitation. So always best to ask for help from other health uh, healthcare providers in your area pag meron kayong mga patients na nagko-code. Now that we have already established respiration and maintained ventilation, the next thing that we need to do as healthcare providers to high-risk newborns is to maintain fluid and electrolyte balance. As previously discussed, yung mga high-risk newborns natin, if they have difficulty initiating breathing or if they are not provided warmth or thermoregulation on their first minutes of life, they are prone to developing hypoglycemia. So pag sinabi po natin hypoglycemia, this is the decrease in blood glucose and this usually results from the efforts exerted from the first breathing. You have to remember po no, na yung bata po mag-exert mag siya ng sobrang daming energy and effort to maintain or establish respiration. And yung effort na yun po ay magkakaroon siya ng expenditure of energy. So meaning, pag maraming energy na nababurn or nagagamit, yung bata po kailangan din niyang gamitin yung mga glucose niya sa katawan because that is another source of energy. Because of difficulty initiating breathing, gaputa, sobrang dami niyang na-exert na energy and effort, nagkakaroon siya ng mababang glucose level kasi nagagamit niya lahat ng kanyang glucose just to establish and maintain respiration. So, very common po ang hypoglycemia sa mga newborns who are high risk because of their difficulty of initiating their breathing. Aside from that, the high risk newborns are also prone to having dehydration. Bakit naman po sila nagkakaroon ng dehydration? It is usually because of the insensible water loss from rapid respiration. Kung mapapansin nyo po, Pag kayo ay nag inhale exhale ng mabilisan at kukunin nyo yung inyong cellphone or anything there, <sighs> igaganon nyo kunwari, makikita nyo na meron pong moisture na maiiwan sa screen ng phone nyo. That's what we call the insensible water loss. Because if you rapidly inhale and exhale, meron din kayong mga natatanggal or na nag escape na fluids from your body. And because of initiating breathing, difficulty of initiating breathing, or yung mga bata, nagkakaroon sila ng takip niya, or fast respiration, ang ibig sabihin niyan ay marami din nag-exit -ex, nag or nag-escape na uh, fluid sa kanilang katawan which may now cause dehydration. So what do we do as healthcare providers? We have to stop dehydration from 
uh, ever occurring or happening. So, usually the doctor will order lactated ringer solution or 5% dextrose in water and it is given via intravenous therapy. So, bakit po binibigyan yung bata ng 5% dextrose in water? Usually, that's already hitting two birds with one stone. Bakit po? Kasi nga, the doctor is pres uh, prescribing water, dextrose in water, number one, to counteract the effects of dehydration. Kasi nga, dehydrated yung bata, kaya pwede natin siyang bigyan ng fluids. And then, if the child also, incidentally, has hypoglycemia, that 5% dextrose is already enough to counteract the effects of hypoglycemia. Kasi nga po, dextrose is also another form of sugar, which will now address our problem on hypoglycemia. And then, yung ating water naman po, or the fluids that we give to the child, will already address dehydration. Aside from that, we can also give sodium, potassium, glucose, or other electrolytes as long as we deem the doctor deems it necessary to be given to the child so usually to have a better understanding of what electrolytes are needed in the high risk newborn ginagawan sila ng electrolyte analysis so depende kung anong mababang electrolytes na nakikita sa ating analysis uh, yun po yung ibibigay natin in the form of IV therapy but usually, binibigyan natin sila ng lactated ringer solution or 5% dextrose in water to counteract the effects of dehydration and hypoglycemia. Aside from that, you have to remember that the rate of fluid administration should also be carefully maintained. Okay? Kailangan minemaintain natin siya yung rates per minute or drops per minute na sinasabi natin because high levels of fluid can cause patent ductus arteriosus or possible heart failure. So, pwedeng magkaroon siya ng cardiac malfunction kung magkakaroon yung bata ng fluid overload. Remember that these are high-risk newborns and that we have to remember to regulate the administration of fluids or else pwede siyang magkaroon ng patent ductus arteriosus or pwedeng mag-open yung ductus arteriosus. Ano? Or pwede ding magkaroon ng heart collapse yung bata if there is what we call fluid overload. Aside from that, you have to remember that when you are placing a newborn in a radiant warmer or ilalagay mo sila sa isang floor lamp, the child may require more fluid because the heat may increase water loss from convection or radiation. So you have to remember that before and after placing the child in radiant warmer or in uh, under the floor lamp, dapat bigyan nyo sila ng breastfeeding or enough fluids para po hindi sila ma-dehydrate. Kasi sobrang init po pag nilalagay natin yung bata sa radiant warmer or sa under the floor lamp, mainit po yun and that can cause dehydration. So you have to hydrate the child before and after placing them in either radiant warmer or under uh, floor lamps or billy light. So, dapat binibigyan natin sila ng fluids to prevent dehydration. So, this is an example of your radiant warmer. Dito natin nilalagay yung mga bata na kailangan ng thermoregulation. But again, you have to watch out for dehydration if you are using the infant or radiant warmer. Now, in the same vein as maintaining your fluids and electrolyte balance, you also have to look at the specific gravity or the urine output of the child. These things should also be uh, monitored regularly. Kailangan natin tignan yung specific gravity and urine output so that we are given an overview of how the excretory system or the kidneys are functioning in the high-risk newborns. You have to remember that an output, urine output, that is less than 2 ml per kilogram per hour may already suggest dehydration. So, ibig sabihin, pag hindi umiihi yung bata normally ng 2 ml per kilogram per hour, that may already be a sign of dehydration. And pag nakakakita tayo ng dehydration, usually we also see signs and symptoms of shock. Basically, hypovolemic shock. 
Okay? So, ano yung nang nakikita nating changes in the vital signs? You have hypotension, tachycardia, tachypnea, and hypothermia. So, those are the things that we see in the vital signs of a child who has uh, dehydration. Okay? Mababang BP or hypotension, tachycardia or fast uh, cardiac rate, tachypnea or fast breathing, and hypothermia or cold, clammy skin, and low temperature. So, those are your signs and symptoms of dehydration or vital signs changes. Now, when it comes to specific gravity, if the specific gravity of the newborn's urine is greater than 1.015 to 1.020, that already suggests dehydration as well as kidney failure due to primary illness. Anong ibig sabihin nito? Pag yung kasing specific gravity ng isang bata ay mas mataas sa 1.020, ibig sabihin yung kanyang urine ay sobrang concentrated. Mas madami siyang mga waste products and electrolytes na inailalabas as compared sa fluids na nandun sa ihe. So, meaning, if the specific gravity is greater than 1.020, ibig sabihin baka may dehydration yung bata kasi nga konti na lang yung kanyang naiihi or there is already less urination or uh, fluids being expelled or maaari ding that increase in the specific gravity may also be a sign of kidney failure due to a primary illness of the child that may be congenital. So, dapat monitor po natin yung specific gravity ng bata. So, like I said a while ago, uh, pwede ding magkaroon ng hypovolemia or hypovolemic shock yung isang uh, high-risk newborn. When we talk about hypovolemia, that means decrease in the circulating blood volume. That's what we call hypovolemia. And yung usually nakikita natin na signs and symptoms are the same with the signs and symptoms of shock, including tachypnea, pallor, tachycardia, hypotension, or pwede ding magkaroon ng uh, decrease in the central venous pressure, decrease peripheral perfusion, and metabolic acidosis. So, ang nangyayari kasi, kung konti na lang yung nagsisirculate na uh, blood volume in the body, ang nangyayari is prioritize ng ating katawan na mag-supply na lang ng dugo sa mga vital organs that are present in our uh, central part of the body. So, yung brain and then abdominal organs, ito na lang central circulation na lang yung focus ng ating katawan kasi nga konti na lang yung nagsisirculate na blood volume in, the, in cases of hypovolemia. Okay. So what do we do kung meron tayong hypovolemia? Okay? So nakita natin meron siyang low BP or hypotension. So usually if the newborn has hypotension but there is no hypovolemia, okay? We can give dopamine to increase the uh, blood pressure and to improve cell perfusion. Again ha, Pag nakikitaan natin yung bata na mababa yung kanyang BP pero wala naman siyang hypovolemia, dopamine, one dose of dopamine is already enough to increase blood pressure and to improve cell perfusion. However, if the newborn has hypotension accompanied by uh, hypovolemia, usually it is a sign that the newborn had blood loss from previous placenta previa. So, as said a while ago, if the newborn has hypotension, and mababang BP niya, and meron din siyang hypovolemia, this is usually seen in newborns whose mothers had placenta previa. Because in placenta previa kasi, the placenta is low-lying, pwedeng it is already on the cervical os, therefore, yung mga ibang na-absorb niya na dugo from the uterus escapes through the cervical os. Meaning, konti lang din yung dugo na pumunta kay fetus. So, paglabas ng fetus na yon, meron siyang konti na circulating blood volume lang. So, the child may uh, suffer from hypotension and hypovolemia kasi nga konti lang yung circulating blood 
volume niya. So, that condition may be uh, caused by a placenta previa from the mother. Alright, balik tayo sa specific gravity. When we talk about specific gravity, usually ang normal is 1.020. That's the normal specific gravity. And more than that may mean that the urine is very concentrated with uh, waste products, with electrolytes, and konti lang yung fluids na lumalabas. Meaning, that child or the body of the newborn is already uh, reserving fluids, kaya wala siya or konti na lang yung kanyang maiihe. Because usually, increased specific gravity may already be a sign of dehydration or it can also be a sign of kidney failure. Now, apart from monitoring the urination of the neonate, you also have to regulate the temperature or give or provide thermoregulation to the high-risk newborn. So, high-risk newborns have difficulty maintaining a normal temperature and it is important to keep the newborn in a neutral environment by placing the child in an infant or radiant warmer or under the floor lamp, ganon. So, if the child experiences chills, kunwari meron siyang hypothermia, there is increase in energy expenditure which will now lead to increase in oxygen consumption. So, anong mangyayari? Pwedeng magkaroon ng respiratory acidosis yung isang high-risk newborn if you do not maintain uh, or regulate the, ther the temperature. So, it's always best for high-risk newborns that we, as much as possible, give them the best or the most adequate uh, temperature para po hindi sila magkaroon ng respiratory acidosis. Now, because of low oxygen supply, sometimes the cells will undergo anaerobic metabolism and that will now lead to lactic acid production which will be deposited in the bloodstream leading to metabolic acidosis as well. So again, it's very important that we prevent increase in energy expenditure. Ayaw nating magkaroon ng chills yung bata. Kaya as much as possible, we regulate the temperature of the child immediately. Now, when there is acidosis kasi, it increases the possibility of kernicterus. When we speak of kernicterus, ito yung tinatawag natin na uh, presence of bilirubin in the brain. Pag sobrang taas ng bilirubin kasi sa katawan natin, this bilirubin will enter or will cross the blood-brain barrier. It will go to your brain cells and it will um, cause permanent brain damage. So, pwede magkaroon ng mental retardation yung bata. And kernicterus only happens po if there is so much bilirubin in the body. However, if there is acidosis, nag increase po yung risk of the child uh, developing kernicterus. So, mas nagkakaroon po ng uh, naaagravate yung situation and therefore, nagkakaroon siya ng increased chances of developing kernicterus pag merong acidosis in the body. Kaya nga po natin pinipigilan na magkaroon ng acidosis in the child. Aside from that, we have to prevent chilling. Okay? That's part of our responsibility in regulating temperature. And how do we prevent chilling? By wiping, wiping the infant dry, covering with the... the covering the head with a bonnet or placing the child in an infant warmer or gawin natin yung skin-to-skin skin, skin skin contact with the mother. Those are uh, some of the procedures that we can do to prevent chilling in a high-risk newborn. Also, we can use or employ incubators in the care of high-risk newborns. So, usually, newborns are taken care in incubators after resuscitation kasi ito po yung mga uh, thermoregulated environments na sobrang ganda nating ilagay yung bata because it provides them the adequate temperature they need after resuscitation. So, usually, ginagamit natin yung incubators sa mga bata to thermoregulate the environment. Now, uh, in one rule of thumb in the use of incubators is that incubators should not be placed under direct sunlight or ayaw natin ilagay yung incubator sa mga parts na nasisinaga ng araw nor near a radiant warmer 
Bakit? Because the direct heating of the sun in the incubator or kunwari tinabi mo yung incubator sa tabi ng radiant warmer, what happens is that the internal temperature of the incubator will also increase. Therefore, yung setting na nilalagay mo, mas iinit pa yon because of the direct sunlight or uh, because the incubator is placed near a radiant warmer. So as much as possible, wag natin siyang ilagay kung saan malapit yung radiant warmer or hindi din nilalagay si incubator kung saan nasisinagan ng araw so that we want to keep the internal temperature adequate based on the settings that we place. Aside from that, you also have to check the newborn's temperature to be sure that the designated temperature of the newborn and the incubator is maintained. So, dapat po, chinecheck natin na mayat maya yung temperature ng bata so that we know if there is a need to increase the temperature of the incubator or not based on the temperature of the child. Uh, lagi nyo pong tatandaan ano po na incubators are not permanently used by high-risk newborns and that we also need to wean them from using the incubator pag sila ay nag-stable na. When we talk about weaning, in Ilocano po, pusot, pusoten tayo or we gradually stop or we transition, help the child transition from using incubator to adapting to the external environment. That's what we call weaning the baby from the use of the incubator. So how do we wean the child or how do we transition the child from incubator environment from uh, the use of incubator and then it transition natin siya to room temperature how do we do that hindi natin siya agad-agad bibiglaen na ilalabas from the incubator we have to follow certain steps and what are these certain steps number 1 is you have to undress the newborn completely okay tanggalin natin lahat ng mga damit ng bata while the child is still inside the incubator next Still placed on the incubator, ang gagawin natin is that we the temperature of the incubator should be lower than uh, lower ng 1.2 degrees Celsius below the infant's temperature. So for example, the infant's temperature is at uh, 36.2. Ang gagawin natin is we uh, we subtract 1.2 degrees Celsius from the newborn's temperature. So ibig sabihin Bas mababa ng 1.2 degrees yung incubator temperature compared sa temperature ng newborn. So, ibig sabihin, mas malamig ng konte yung temperature ng bata. Okay? So, from 36.2 na uh, body temperature ni neonate, anong gagawin natin sa ating uh, incubator is gagawin natin siyang 35 because that is 1.2 degrees Celsius lower than the body temperature of the neonate. Okay? So, after 30 minutes, ibabad natin yung bata doon sa incubator na yun na mas malamig ng 1.2 uh, degrees Celsius. After 30 minutes, you have to assess the newborn. If the temperature is maintained or if the temperature also got lower. Okay? So, if the temperature is maintained, okay, so, 36.2 si newborn, 35 po yung ating uh, incubator. So, pag na-maintain po ni newborn yung kanyang temperature, the next thing that we're going to do is again lower the incubator temperature. Ba uh, dag -dag ay, uh, bawasan natin ulit siya ng uh, 2 degrees until we reach the room temperature which is usually 24 degrees or 20 6 degrees, 28 degrees, ganun po yung usually room temperature natin. So, konti-konti, pinapababaan natin ng 2 degrees yung incubator until we reach the room temperature. But, if the infant cannot maintain the temperature of the uh, of the, the body's temperature, nag a siya sa temperature ng incubator. Kunwari, 36.2, di ba? Ginawa nating 35 yung incubator. Ang nangyari after 30 minutes, yung bata, yung temperature niya naging 35 din. That means that the newborn is not yet ready to be taken out of the incubator because uh, she or he, the newborn, cannot yet establish 
their own thermoregulation process. So what do we do? We stop or we slow the weaning procedure. So hindi natin itutuloy na ilabas yung bata from the incubator kasi nga hindi pa niya kayang i-maintain yung kanyang temperature. So that's how we wean the child from the incubator. The next thing we can do is also use kangaroo care. Okay? Yung kangaroo care po is the use of skin-to-skin -skin contact to maintain body heat. And I know for a fact that this is already a very familiar topic for you because you've met this during our previous discussions last semester. Now, in the kangaroo care, we use the skin-to-skin -skin contact to maintain body heat kasi nga mainit din po yung ating skin surface. And that is also suffice to keep the newborn warm. So how do we do that? We have to undress the infant. And then we just uh, leave on the diaper and cap. So tanggalin natin yung damit ng bata by exposing also the chest. Okay? And then what do we do? The parents can sit on a chair and then they will hold the infant against their own chest. Ilalagay yung bata dito sa dibdib. Wala ding damit dapat. Skin to skin contact. So the chest of the newborn is touching the chest of the parent. And then we place a blanket on them and then we give them privacy and then also that blanket is used for added warmth. Now, maganda po yung kangaroo care because it does not only promote thermoregulation but it also promotes or fosters parent-child bonding. And it also, again, like I said, promotes heat conservation. So that's what another thing that we can do kung wala tayong kangaroo uh, incubator sa ating mga area, we can uh, promote the use of kangaroo care. Okay, so that already ends our discussion for today's session. Uh, so before I say goodbye, I will just have to check the attendance to really make sure that you listen to our discussion for today's session. So, anong gagawin natin is that ang challenge ko for today is you will have to send a selfie with your printed handouts on our Facebook group chat with no caption whatsoever. Wag nyong lalagyan ng kahit anong caption so that those who did not attend this video lecture will have no idea of what is happening. This will also prove that you listened to our video lecture until the end of the discussion. The pictures will be used to record your attendance. Like I said last time, ire-record ko yung inyong attendance only if you can prove to me that you have printed already the handouts that I sent you. And pictures may only be sent to our Facebook group chat until 7 o'clock p.m. today. You also have to prepare for a short quiz on your Edmodo classroom because I will be giving you a 10-item exam. And the next video lecture will be uploaded again on the next meeting. So again, with that being said, maraming maraming salamat for listening and enjoy the rest of the day. See you guys. Bye-bye.